Well, how here with more space engineers. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day. We have gotten a bunch of stuff done. <coughs> I'm a little congested today. Apologies. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, the conveyor network is a thing, at least for the first portion of the ship. And, um, a little bit of extra stuff done as well so we'll get we'll get caught up show you what's been going on walk you through the the updates and uh first we have to get started so let's go all right so once again happy wednesday everybody <laughs> So if you remember last time we finished welding up and I walked you through the medical bay, uh, what we've done is we've done a couple of small changes. One, we took the block that was here out, put a full block above it, and put an, uh, a air, an air vent off of the O2 generator. And we've done this on both sides of the ship. Open this up. Since we're attached to the main base, we still have a script running. So we now have all of the rooms are now uh, able to be pressurized. Uh, I have it set to extract on all the vents simply because of the fact that I don't want to be wasting oxygen <clears throat> because Panda was silly and did something stupid. I put oxygen tanks on the grid without thinking about how much ice I had in the system. So the hydro or the oxygen tanks are now about 50% full <laughs> and I've got no ice left. Uh, so if I need to refill my hydrogen tanks, I actually have to go over to the, uh, the, the actual ship to pull hydrogen out of the tanks that we have. So each of the bedrooms are now completely, completely sealed. This is true for all six staterooms. Everything is welded up and good to go here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, this one I did clean up a little bit. We've got the uh, the clean metal texture on all of the like all of the uh, habitation blocks. So, like the doors and you know the the bunks and stuff, just to show you what it could look like. Um, everything on the grid is being placed using the battered skin and the default gray so it, uh, it works out pretty well i was i was actually very surprised so now the hangar that we were building last time let's step in here we have this completely welded up and that big slab that was on that was up on top that i was walking around on is actually behind this blast door well, ceiling so what this should what this should do is allow us to have a little bit of protection in here uh, and if we have a ship that gets a little too close to the ceiling or we have th strong thrusters, we don't have to worry quite so much about the damage uh, blowing through on the blocks behind. But yeah, so um, now the script that we have running for the doors has this really annoying habit. Let me hit this button here. <clears throat> Basically, the hangar doors will open for a couple of seconds. And then they will auto close. I think it, it opens for like three or four seconds. I don't know, maybe five seconds. But what will happen is, and this is better than it used to be. It used to be that it would open fully, pause a second, and then close. So the thank you to the script author for updating that. But this does allow you to have a somewhat automated hanger system. Uh, what I will probably end up doing is putting a sensor in somewhere. I'm thinking, actually, let's uh, put it this way. So I'm thinking we're going to put a sensor or sensors. Um, I don't know where I put it is the question, is the problem. Not even a question. Oh, uh, so I'm thinking... I may have to place it like back here somewhere that keeps it out of out of sight um, and what we'll do is we'll just have it set so that when you when the ship gets within certain range of the the doors and have it cover the the actual area of the doors and then have it come down here probably I don't know, like five or six blocks worth, say, uh, maybe 50 meters. 
So as long as it's a friendly ship, it will uh, come in and we'll have a second sensor, I think, that if there's a friendly ship inside the hangar, the, uh, the hangar won't open. That keeps people from stealing your ship and trying to, to get in or stealing a copy of your ship and trying to get into this one uh, using that system. But we'll see how that all works out. Like I said, we've got a, a bunch of stuff left to do on this. Um, it's hard to believe we're still looking at the infrastructure of the ship. We're not even at the point where we're ready to start putting skin on this thing yet. Alright, so... This is the forward area that we were talking about, which will be the, the mine slash um, gravity bomb bay. We've put in our windows here so we can see what the status is of anything being built in there. We have that here as well, and then this is duplicated on the other side again. We put in a half stair over here with a walkway. <clears throat> Sorry. And what we did is we used the 2 by one base and we inverted them so that the small section is down, so it's on top of the windows. To give us a little bit of clearance in there, you come up this way and this whole thing is arched but you can look down as well and I'm thinking about putting a couple of uh, control stations up here specifically just like button systems so that you can change what the ordinance is so if we do something with um, different ordinance types we'll be able to have those um, you know basically I want ordinance 1, ordinance 2, ordinance 3, whatever but yeah, so that's um, what we've got going on. And then, like I said, it is mirrored on this half of the ship. And we have the half block stairs again. And what are you missing? You're missing glass. I thought I brought all of this stuff over before. Do I have, I have plates on me? Let's go ahead and load a little bit of that up. <clears throat> and then this is our secondary path back through everything. So yeah, that's where we are with the ship build so far. Now, we start getting into the more, I don't want to say difficult stuff, but definitely I think more interesting elements at this point. Because we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have the, uh, the welders piped in, at least the first series of welders piped in up here through the uh, the top of the ship but I don't have any piping over to that second one so what I'm thinking we may do is either change this out for a uh, conveyor junction and run the conveyor blocks all the way around and down or we start patching into the the underbody network at this point. And if we want to patch into the underbody network, we're still going to need a couple of blocks. But it will be a little bit different. Because that's the welder there. Because hmm. we're going to have doors going across. So if we take you out put a uh, put a conveyor block there or put a, another conveyor block there and run it which way would we run it I'd probably run it this way and run it So maybe run it from here over, this way. Which would actually allow me to tie that in, and then we can run the rest of it back here somewhere. <clears throat> maybe even run it like around and straight back here. Um, now, part of the reason why I'm trying to figure out how I want to run this is because we're going to have weapons mounted on pretty much all sides of the ship. 
And the, the question comes down to where are we going to attach those weapons? Because we do need an area that's going to be for the, any of the turrets that's a 3x3 three three space. So I want to make sure we're, we're leaving room for this kind of stuff. And I want to have um, some redundancy in the system that's feeding into our defenses because, well, you know, you don't want somebody to get a lucky shot and knock your entire defense grid offline, so. Alright, so I think for now that's, let's see what that looks like in the short term. So interior plates, we're going we're gonna to use a lot of these, so. Alright, so what we're talking about here is taking this and just as an example here, we maybe run this this way. Um, you are one block, block and a half. So let's go Here. So it'd be easier if we were on the top of the ship because then I could walk around. Yeah, so what we're going to do here is we go. There we go. There we go. Like so. That feeds this welder line. Now we will be if we do this, we'll mirror this on both sides. And then this comes back here. So we end up with that. And that. Okay, so that feeds this side, that side's being fed elsewhere, we'll end up with the doors on one side or the other, maybe on both sides. See, the problem with doing doors on both sides is that the, they won't let you place the damn block unless you've got the two, two blocks of clearance. And I don't want that much clearance on it. But what I could do... Let's see if we did... Energy low doors here uh, yes, okay. so if we do something like this I just used <laughs> the last of my still play son of a Oh how Alright, let's grab this really quick. We just need a couple. I'm not all that worried about having enough of these things. Oh. Alright, so we would have come on, thank you. So we end up with three doors there. What I'm thinking here is we do a little creative modding. Do I still have... no. Okay, so we're, odds are we're not going to be using the regular ramps. So we do that. And... We do something like this. Actually, we're going to have to do the same thing we did over there. And that actually gives us about the height that we were looking at you know, doing before. And then we end up, say, this being 
Energy critical. Say that is our uh, maximum width of the ship. So we're doing that on the side as well. Not that it really matters how we do it, we can just we can either use the conveyor block like that or the uh, the conjunction the junction block or the conveyor tubes. And then we end up... Did I just head that the wrong way? I took that the wrong way, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. Come on. And then we run that back down the line like we did on the other side. All right, let me go grab some power really quick. The nice thing is, is that all of our uh, med bays are now piped in, so. <laughs> down here again for a second. Alright, so that fixes our, our piping problem. And now every, that means both of our welders over here are piped in. Um, this network is piped in. This network would be piped in. And we now have our uh, armor depth for everything. Which actually works out because we want this to be a little bit lower than this so this is going to fold over into this area so we may end up with like one more layer below this blending it all in um, which also then gives us the ability to feed network a uh, defense network down here since that's piped in there Alright, so you are the merge block. So we want a gravity generator. Go ahead and get these off of here for a second. Not that it really matters what direction that is facing. And we want two projector blocks. And these these matter only in the fact that, well. We want them facing forward. Facing forward, yes, okay. And we're gonna do the same over here. Now you all should be in the same line. You are in the same line. Let's go ahead and knock you out for a second. Again, the only the only thing that matters is the vertical column below the uh, the grav block. All right, so that gives us both of our project uh, both of our projector sets down here. Now, the only other thing that we need to figure out, or the only thing we really need to focus on, is in here where we are going to have a bunch of grav generators. One there, make sure you are not. Now I could basically have one grav generator in here, um, but I wanna make sure these things get away from the ship and I don't wanna to have to do a whole lot of recalculating. So we're going to make sure that everything is set up properly. There we 
There you go. And again, these will be single block columns of gravity pushing straight down. And like I said, what this really allows us to do is we'll be able to set up landmine areas uh, because we'll basically have armed warheads on merge blocks that we turn the merge blocks off for. And as we go through, you know, basically we'll be able to drop, what, eight mines at a time. If you're in a gravity plane, then you are dropping eight bombs per time. Not a bad, not a bad way to uh, introduce yourself to a new planetary civilization, yes? <laughs> Alright, so now that the shenanigans are out of the way, let's go ahead and get that stuff off of here because we are going to start working on our decoy system. Now, I'm going to basically keep a very simple system in place for this. Oh, wait, before I forget. We are going to need that as well. Let's go drop off some of these plates. And pick up some of our other plates. Right, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to take 50 of those. And 200 of those should work. Okay, so what I'm thinking about doing here... We have, we know that we have at least two blocks of armor that we're going to have out here, which gives us, you know, one block of negative space. On that side at least. Or, we can do something like this where we say, got too used to having those on uh, block five. So we go, I don't know, one, two... Let's go. I don't really have a, a line feeding over here, but I do have a line feeding over here. So I think what we'll do is do that. That's our walkway. Oh, I'm trying to remember what the radius is on the welder. I know it's three blocks wide, but I think it's only like a block and a half deep. So if I do... This. So if we have it go... We do that. That cuts into it there. So if we do a welder here, let's go ahead and seal that room off that's one two three so yes you are whoops you are the problem child there and so we do this actually no We want the decoys there. No, that's right. That was right. right. Um, I may actually move that out one. Because this is kind of close to our uh, launcher system. And the whole purpose of decoys is to keep things away from your vital <laughs> ship vitals you know you don't uh, and that will actually you know what we should do let's do a little bit of 
hybrid armor. So let's go. Something like that. I'm thinking. And then we can do a layer of uh, because it's going to be a lot of armor here. I don't need to worry quite so much about it, but the armor on the bottom section is going to be thinner. And so I want to make sure that we have, you know, enough protection in here. That we're not going to have to worry quite so much about this. What sucks is I'm going to have to come back and cut a lot of this out so I can get in here to get all this welded up. But I'm just for uh, illustration purposes trying to make sure we have enough of this to protect basically to protect everything we really need it to. And we backfill that. Okay, now we're going to do this on both sides. And the idea is that we, we basically want to have a system set up where, you know, a portion of the ship is pulling as much aggro as possible to keep it away from, to keep the aggro away from the vital areas. Because what it will do is, once it can detect certain things within the grid, the AI turrets prioritize things, and decoy blocks are the first thing that the AI will, will uh, target. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try and spread this dam the damage absorption out um, across the grid. We're going to do the same thing that we did over there, over here. You guys are on the same line, right? You are on the same line, so how did we end up with one, two, three, I guess, I guess that's right. Um, but yeah, so we, we'll need to go through and make sure everything over here is balanced, and as you can see, we've got the, the blocks set up to try and basically block as much of the incoming damage as possible, and what I'm, what I'm foreseeing is that the, the, attacks are either going to come in from this way or from underneath so we've got the uh, the hybrid armor the composite armor is basically spacing themselves a little bit and what that's one of the reasons why I've got these turned the way that I do is because I'm hoping that that little gap there because it's not actually connected should count as a, a an air gap break in there for damage transfer Again, in theory. <laughs> what I may do is I may actually do a double wall of this stuff. Take this, take this line out and replace it with heavy armor blocks. And basically have two rows of uh, the blast doors. Which might work a little bit better. Because if that, if that does count, if that spacing does count as, a, as, as an air gap armor break, um, you end up with an air gap armor break a line of armor, air gap armor break, and another line of armor. But if we do another blast door, we end up with a third air gap break. Um, so, because the way that explosive damage works is a percentage of it is applied at the point of impact. A percentage of that, what's the, the remaining percentage, is then scattered or split evenly in a, basically in a sphere. So what will happen is, is you get, say, 100 points of damage come in, right? Say 25% of it hits here. 50% of it is um, in a sphere one block in. So what will happen is you get 25%, 25%, and then the other 50% is in that sphere. It's not exactly how it works, but that's kind of the idea of how it works. By putting an air gap in there, 
what we're doing is it would hit say 25 percent here and then 75 percent would then scatter again not exactly how it works it's just you know giving you an idea of how this is really <laughs> i swear man oh. anyway <laughs> for those who don't know i live near a uh, a small airport i actually live next uh, near a large airport as well but the area that i'm in is uh yeah you know, we've got a lot of um let's let's say high paid ex executives who like to fly their own planes and uh my understanding is is that the area that i am in is not supposed to have a direct flyover like that but it doesn't stop them from doing it because they can they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll pay the fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so... Energy critical. All of that said, that's the basis for what we're going to be doing for our, our passive defenses. Uh, we're going to do... We've got the one here. We're going to do a second one on this side. And then we're going to... When we get the aft section in, which is going to be our engineering and probably storage area we are going to put storage blocks in this on this grid and hell i may put a refinery set up in here not like we don't have the room but the question comes Meteor down storm to storm inbound and when it rains it pours in this game all right so what i'm there is a decision i have to make that i haven't really put a whole lot of thought into yet because I'm kind of not wanting to do it but it, at the same time I kind of have to do it um, we may need to grind this ship down hi man you guys are just going ham on those things aren't you ah <sighs> And I really like the ship, and I would love to keep the ship if possible. But the problem that we're running into is that there are block limits in the game, and they are there for a reason. So I'm trying to figure out if do I want to just increase my block count, my block limit um, budget, I guess you could say. So that we can have both of these ships in the save. Um, no energy. Oh, crap. Get off the rail! <laughs> Put the damn safety rail in. Quick! There we go. Um, so do I want to increase the block budget? Or do I want to... Um, grind that ship down? So I'm going to ask you all to let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Uh, it's always good to get feedback from you all. Because I don't know... Because obviously I can't pilot both ships. Well, I mean, technically, I guess I could if I used a couple of scripts. But um, that ship is not really built for combat. I mean, it, it would it would survive a little bit. I mean, we could use it as a decoy or something. But I'm really liking the way that it came out with the battered armor. I mean, just the overall the overall feel of the ship is nice. So I'm kind of hesitant to uh, dedicate it to a uh, suicide decoy but it is what it is you know I'm almost tempted to do the same thing to this that we did with uh, the old ship basically start cutting it up and transferring the pieces over to uh, this ship because I'm thinking those nacelle areas here and the batteries with the hangers. I wouldn't be bad to have on the side of the ship, say, back here. You know? So we could do that. We could actually take a saw to it and uh, basically cut down this line. Because that would give us our refineries as well. Yeah, I mean, we could do this. Uh... Have to throw a gyro on it someplace. Take the turret off of it while we were doing all of this. Hmm. This could be done. Hell, we could even 
go so far as to where the batteries are, cut this line out, take that section, strap it in somewhere around here, have where the batteries are basically line up, like say uh, right here, so that you'd have the two lines of batteries, you'd have the angled there, carry this line over, have the opposing angle over here, and then have the, the forward hangers off on the side. How did you end up with a hole in it? I must have been using that as a, a work access. So let me know. That's another thing that you can provide some comment on down in the, the comment section. That would end up making this ship just ridiculously wide. I mean, it's, it's already it's already pretty hefty there. And what's frightening is, is that the back end of the ship is probably going to end up being a little bit wider than the front end. And like I said, we, we will probably sculpt this a little bit. Because, you know, we've got another two, two blocks on either side that we're going to be going out. Hmm. Maybe. So, definitely, maybe. So we'll see how it is. Alright. Okay, so, we know what the defenses are going to look like. We know how we're doing them, and we're going to be doing that on both sides. And like I said, we will have them on aft area as well. Uh, we still have to put in the rear launchers, both vert uh, dorsal and ventral. Ventricle? Ventral. <laughs> uh, but I'm thinking for the aft section, we may end up with uh, doubling those up. So we have the two two upper, two lower on the forward section, then we'll have two on, well, four on this side, and four, both basically port and starboard. So we'll end up with four launchers. I'm thinking I might start those here and run them back this way. Because that would allow me to go, let me see here, so if we did, damn it, I got too used to having those Heavy armor blocks on the. Uh... So, and then you become an outer wall there. So, one, two, three. We'll only have a single wall between them. Three. That should give us a three by three space. Yes, it does. Okay. So see how we have these here. Is that three, two? That is three. But I have these here, so I'd have to reroute that. If we did that. Maybe we'll do three launchers. If we do that, I have to reroute this stuff, which is actually not a problem. I mean, because the only thing that we're really doing here is feeding this. And I could change the way that the, the lines are supplied here. Basically put a conveyor junction in on this side and run it down into wherever we need it over there. Cut that out. And then we have conveyor block here already, which is already into the grid. And what we could do is just basically feed that into the production blocks. Basically, the welders would be on this side, pointing inwards instead of on the front and back like we have it up there. Oh, I think this is going to work better. And then, I'll, then I don't have to... Well, I still have to repipe these because we want the gravity generator and the uh, projection blocks above it. Okay, I think I like that idea. So if we do that... Two, 
two blocks over, two blocks over. Let's make sure that we have one, two, okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Right? Yes, okay, that's right. So if we have that, you then go out. So we're going from here. right now. So you end up with something like this. What I may do, I may do that since we have two blocks there. Let's do the same here. We're going to end up with something that looks a little bit like that. So then we have you guys here. And I'll probably set up something in between. Right, that should be three there. Three. And one. Make sure that looks balanced. It does. Turn that off for a second. All right. I'm liking the way that that's coming together. Because then we'll have. Oh, you know what I can do. Oh, that would actually be. That would be evil. That would be so evil. Double these up. Basically we have, say, since this is our, our midship line, this is the space that we this is the spacer that we would use. Do I still have uh, let's use the light box. So do a gravity generator here on that, that level, and a gravity generator on that level. So basically, our merge block would be here. Projector, projector, gravity. Actually, no. Our merge block would be there. Ah, crap. Probably. So our merge block would be here. Damn it. So we have one merge block there. And one merge block here. Yeah, we could actually do this. So if we did that... No, I guess I'd have to do two blocks up. I, I would really want dedicated gravity. Energy low. Let me check the grav generator really quick, because I don't think there's a, a quick way to reverse the gravity. Let's see here. 
Yeah, see, there's not. It's funny that you can only do up to 1G now on these. You used to be able to do like 2 or 3Gs per... I think it was like 3.4Gs or something like that. Because um, I used to use a bunch of these and uh, have them set up for max output, but... Yeah, see, if there was a way to do a quick reverse on this without using a script... I mean, I guess I could use the spherical gravity generator. Since it would be directly below it, it would push, it should fire them out and away from the ship. That could be interesting. Let me do some experiments with the uh, spherical generator. Because if we do a spherical generator, we could put the spherical generator on either one of these. And um, because of the fact that it's the way that the gravity generator works, it should push objects straight out from the ship. I mean, the worst that happens is we basically put a gravity generator that we attach the merge block to. Which, you know, honestly isn't that big of a deal. But I kind of want to give that a test and see how that works. So I'll probably do something in creative mode. Um, off camera just to experiment with it. If you if you want to see it, something else for you to add to the comment section below. So we got three things down there for you. Do you want to see some spherical grav generator testing with uh, mass blocks? What should we do with the old ship versus the new ship? Should we go ahead and, you know, we've already got a blueprint of that thing saved, and I'll probably save a new one because I have made some changes using the new DLC. Um... So do we want to grind it down, or do we just want to increase the saves uh, PCU, CPU, PCU uh, limit and block count limit? And let me see. I think that's what was the third one? I forgot what the third one was. Somebody remind me. I'll have to go back and look at the the video again. <laughs> Oh, all right. I think that's going to do it for us today. That gives us a whole lot of stuff to work with. I am going to have to do some reworking on the pipe system here. Basically, this section is going to go away uh, on both sides. That's going to come out and be repiped in, which means that's going to go away as well. Um, so that we're going to do that on both sides. That way we'll have this be a clear launch shaft. So we'll have three vertical um, going up from the ship, three vertical dropping away from the ship. And then back here, I'm thinking we're going to put our engineering space and cargo space. I think the cargo blocks, if we do this, so if we go there, This way is the question. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. Because I'm kind of liking having that be its own little thing. So that the... So the med area is kind of secure, and I, I kind of like doing that, especially since we have the vents here. Hmm. Right. And you're going to run back this way a little bit.
large cargo, large cargo. And we just run the piping from top and bottom. Yeah, I think that's going to work. Maybe do four large cargo. See, the other thing that we're going to run into is I still need to put thrusters on this thing, and I haven't. I still haven't decided if I'm going to do a, a hybrid thruster system or dedicate it to one fuel type. Because if I dedicate it to one fuel type, it's most likely going to be ion. And it's obviously not going to be atmospheric. <laughs> but... I mean, we could actually do large atmospheric. Do six large atmospheric um, thrusters. I'd have to take it into, into a creative save, or at least an alternate save and see if we could get it to work. But we need to get it under power first before we worry about any of that. Because if I do, um, the reason I'm trying to figure it out, because if I do atmospheric thrusters, I would get rid of the, the aft launcher area and just put the six large atmospherics back here. And then probably figure out a spot down here or on the side somewhere to add a couple of more. Like I might add Instead of having so much armor here, I might add like two or three more atmospheric lift thrusters here, large thrusters. That would give it a lot of lifting power, so. And then I'd have to pipe in uh, the uh, hydrogen thrusters. Or we just say, to hell with it, make it a dedicated orbital bomber. It can't enter atmosphere, but uh, it can do a lot of damage. Because from high enough up, I mean, you could sit just in the upper atmosphere. Even with a, well, even with an ion system, you could you could sit in the, just the upper atmosphere and orbital will bombard, and that would keep you outside of the range of uh, the the turrets. And basically, with having two or three decoy launchers being able to drop into the same area, you just drop a bunch of decoys, and then right behind the decoys are the warheads. That might actually work. I think that's what we're going to do. So we'll do this with large ions, which means we're going to need at least two large reactors. Um, I might even go four large reactors to, to ease the fuel requirements of this thing. And if we're doing that, you are a hammer. What's behind you? I don't remember what's behind you. You're the med bay. All right, so. so you are the floor. What I'm thinking here then is let's take you out. Like I said, this is, it is a, uh, I want you, I choose you, Pikachu. All right, oh, uh, I'm able to place your fire area. All right, so, I guess we don't really need to worry about the yield so much. Block too far, too far forward. So yes, yes it is. Okay, so it needs to go back one. Move it on back. Okay. <laughs> right. And then you are going to do the same thing. 
because I want to be able to feed into that. Which means you should be good there. Yep. All right. And then we will do one of you there and one of you there. And then that feeds up into that line that we were talking about before. Okay. All right, so yes, that should do it for us for today. I've got a lot of stuff to get welded in. You know what? I just realized. Let's kill two birds with one stone. So we said that we want to be able to uh, produce things. So if we go that away. Here. That, that, see? We get that. You got it all in one little area. Which is good. And it's basically under here, so it's going to add a little bit more defense because I don't know if you've ever attacked a ship made out of refineries. Energy. It is hard <laughs> to break through those things. And then that means we'll be able to go ahead and do cargo up here, pipe that in. That'll actually make it easier to pipe that kind of stuff in. So we have two refineries, two assemblers, at least two large cargo, if not four. And then we'll have our engineering area. And then we have to figure out our thruster array. Okay. So we've got a couple more days worth of... Uh, of work going on here not just talking about welding this thing up all right so yes we're gonna go ahead and get out of here i want to thank you all for stopping and hopefully you enjoyed it if you did make sure you hit that like button if you're new to the channel want to see more um, or just want to do something nice for me today on this lovely wednesday be sure to hit that subscribe and if you want to keep up to date with what's going on around here and any news on the channel don't forget to ring the uh, the notification bell because youtube says it is working and some people tell me they actually get notices now so <laughs> anyway i'm gonna get out of here don't forget the homework folks if you've got some comments throw them down in the section below let me know what you think about updating either the uh either grinding this ship down the old ship down to to stay within the current limits upping the limits and um you know what you think about the the overall design anyway I'm going to get out of here. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Enjoy the rest of the week, and we will see you back here on Friday for more Space Engineers. As always, folks, take care and be safe out there, everybody. <laughs> oh, so much more mining to do now. <laughs>